Aloha, beautiful friends. As I live in one of the sunniest spots in the world, I am asked frequently and I worry frequently about how to protect my skin from the potentially damaging UVA and UVB rays of the sun. Sun protection, in my opinion, is a holistic and multi-pronged endeavor, and I cover a lot of dietary and lifestyle details about sun protection in this video up here, but in this video I would like to get into specific product and ingredient recommendations, so please stay tuned for precise information on which brands and which products to buy that will protect your your health, the health of your family, and the health of our oceans. I say this in the hope that it's obvious. An effective way to avoid harmful sun exposure is to not expose yourself to the sun. I'm very mindful about when I'm outside unprotected. If at all possible, trips to the beach, hiking, snorkeling, and other outdoor activities are planned for hours of the day when the sun isn't as powerful as it could be, which means that I avoid being out in the sun between the hours of 9 or 10 a.m. and 4 or 5 p.m., depending on the time of year. Obviously, I do want to make sure that I'm getting enough vitamin D, which I do talk about in my other video, and obviously there are times when I can't avoid the sun like this. At those times, I am fairly vigilant about keeping my fair skin covered. Hats, visors, sunglasses, sarongs, UV protective rash guards, beach towels, and umbrellas go a long way to keeping my skin unburned and undamaged. But I can't always be covered, so if I know that I'm going to be especially exposed for an especially long time, I use sunscreen. And this is where it gets tricky. So there's been some hype recently about the chemical oxybenzone, which is found in most sunscreens on the market. As a chemical UV filter, oxybenzone is effective at preventing sunburn, but it is also a potent hormone disruptor that mimics estrogen in the bodies of humans, marine mammals, and fish. Oxybenzone also has an effect on coral by messing with their reproduction and growth in various ways, as well as increasing coral sensitivity to temperature changes. As such, it is a prominent cause of coral death and bleaching worldwide. Oxybenzone is deadly to coral at concentrations equivalent to one drop diluted between six Olympic-size swimming pools. So remember that figure when you consider that 14,000 tons of sunscreen products enter our oceans at beaches every year. Anyone who has visited busy beaches in Hawaii, Florida, anywhere in the Caribbean, and many other warm places around the world have probably experienced the noxious amounts of sunscreen fumes present in the air and the oily film that develops on the surface of the water. Ironically, when I visit Waikiki, which is renowned for its beach, I refuse to swim in the ocean because it's disgusting and it's a health hazard. When oxybenzone is applied to the skin, it appears in your blood and urine minutes afterward, which means that our oceans and waterways are not only exposed to oxybenzone from use at the beach, but also when we go home and take a shower, or when we pee oxybenzone-laced urine into the toilet and flush it into our sewers. As if that weren't bad enough, Another issue with most conventional sunscreens is that they contain nanoized particles, or nanoparticles, meaning that they contain elements that have been broken down into such tiny particles that they can be very quickly absorbed into the skin. Some studies suggest that these particles can be absorbed through the skin and into your bloodstream where they could potentially cause organ damage, but these findings have been disputed by other studies. Another and bigger but, I'm not sure who funded those disproving studies, which triggers what, in this situation, I would consider a healthy dose of paranoia. There's also the issue that, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around how tragically the public has been duped by this, but smaller particles of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide result in higher SPFs, aka sun protection factor. But 
SPF only relates to UVB protection because UVB rays are the ones that cause sunburn, but SPF does not dictate UVA protection, which are the UVA rays that penetrate deeper into your skin, causing more significant damage and aging, including the damage that leads to melanoma. And apparently SPF and UVA protection are inversely correlated, meaning that the higher the SPF, the lower your UVA protection, which means that you have people slathering themselves and their kids in SPF 100 sunscreen, thinking that they could essentially walk into a microwave oven and be protected. These people are staying out in the midday sun for hours and hours because they believe that they are protected. But in reality, those are the people who are becoming most vulnerable to skin damage, including the skin damage that leads to melanoma. And this, of course, is all in addition to the fact that when high SPF sunscreens are tested in independent labs to confirm their SPF, oftentimes an SPF 100 product can come back with a rating of anywhere between SPF 30 and SPF 80. So you just don't know. And here is a real kick in the nuts. You know when you go to the beach nowadays and you can hardly breathe because everyone is spraying themselves with that god-awful aerosol sunscreen? Yeah, I'm familiar with it too. The nanoized titanium and zinc that they're putting into these sprayable sunscreens is then inhaled, and when it gets into your lungs, it causes lung damage. These products are being sprayed into the faces of toddlers. I don't know how sunscreen manufacturers sleep at night. I really don't. So in addition to the oxybenzone and the nanoparticle fiasco, there are many other chemical ingredients added to your standard sunscreens. For the sake of video length, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but these can be really nasty chemicals. They're potent allergens whose nasty effects seem to become even nastier when they're exposed to sunlight. And all of this is why I was so happy when I went to my local health food store a few weeks ago and I loaded up on all-natural, non-toxic, reef-safe sunscreen, and I found so many options available. I ended up deciding to buy a product that was proudly oxybenzone-free, and I purchased it and used it for several weeks until I bumped into two wonderful ladies who made this short film all about toxic sunscreens and their effect on our coral reef, and I had them look at my sunscreen. And they pointed out that several other chemical UV filtration ingredients in my all-natural reef-safe sunscreen, the octanosate, the octosalate, the homosalate, and the octocrylene are almost equally as toxic to my body as well as to marine life as oxybenzone is. Let's listen to this quote taken from the Earthwatch Group article on these and similar UV filtration chemicals. Quote unquote, the Food and Drug Administration has not reviewed evidence of potent hazards of sunscreen filters. Instead, it grandfathered in ingredients in the late 1970s when it began to consider sunscreen safety. The Danish EPA recently reviewed the safety of active ingredients in sunscreen and concluded that most ingredients lacked information to ensure their safety. 16 of the 19 ingredients studied had no information about their potential to cause cancer. And while the published studies suggest that several chemical filters interact with human sex or thyroid hormones, none of the ingredients had sufficient information to determine the potential risks to humans from hormone disruption. I, for one, am not willing to be a first-generation guinea pig. This stuff is genuinely toxic. I am not being hyperbolic when I say that, and I will say it again. We are putting this stuff on our children. We are putting this stuff on the bodies of pregnant women, and we don't know what it does to our hormonal systems. 
But luckily, it's not all doom and gloom. The two ladies that I met had several sunscreens available that are safe. And I will get to those in just a moment. But first, I want to say a big F you to companies like Nature's Gate and Kiss My Face, the manufacturers I trusted enough to slather their greenwashed products onto my body and the bodies of my kids. These companies who purposefully took advantage of my momentary ignorance and sold me this untested, toxic crap, it's not appreciated. Let it go. So, and I say this with deep grief over my lost innocence, since apparently no one can be trusted without intensive vetting. Let me break this down for you. These are the basic guidelines. No chemical UV filters. That includes oxybenzone, octanosate, octisalate, homosalate, octocrylene. Avobenzone is the only chemical filter that is suspected to be safe-ish, but it's highly unstable when exposed to sunlight. And its breakdown products are known to trigger skin allergies. So nice one on that, FDA. You don't let any slip through the cracks, do you? So check your sunscreen, check your moisturizer, check your lip balm, check your makeup. This crap finds its way into all kinds of products. Also, never use the aerosol spray sunscreens. They are horrible for the environment in just about every way possible. And I, for one, am sick and tired of breathing in sunscreen while I'm trying to chill at the beach. And if you'll remember, that is not just me being an irritable butthead. That's me wanting to avoid lung damage. The only truly safe sunscreens are those that contain non-nano titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. I'm going to give you two brands that I and the creators of the film Reefs at Risk, which you guys should take the time to watch and share, trust. These brands, I am fairly confident, are committed to doing the right thing for the sake of doing the right thing. And they provide vegan sunscreen which is something that I discovered in the researching for this video, is kind of rare. The first brand I love is Stream to See. This company is kind of awesome all around. I love their sunscreen, I love their shampoos, their conditioners, their body washes, and all of their products are biodegradable and safe to use near the ocean. Another great brand is Garden Goddess. In addition to their great mineral-based sunscreens, they also have some fantastically healing skincare products for those of us who have perhaps been a bit careless with our sun exposure in the past. So these mineral sunscreens can be a little bit more mm, inconvenient than the widely available chemical death pastes that most people slather themselves with simply because you have to rub them in longer. You know, because the cocktail of hormonal carnage isn't sinking directly into your bloodstream, which is an inconvenience I'm more than happy to endure for my health, the health of my developing stepdaughters, and the health of the ocean ecosystems I adore. You might also be saying, Lily, WTF, why are the SPF so low? Well, I'm glad that you asked, and some of my viewers who have been paying close attention probably already know why. That's because, as we've covered, high SPF only means that they prevent sunburn, not necessarily sun damage. But if you really insist on using a high SPF product, I do have a solution for you. I suggest you take a Sharpie, and you take it, and you write on top of the SPF higher numbers. So here, there you go, this went from SPF 20 to SPF 120. Because, as independent lab testing has indicated, that's essentially what copper whatever in Hawaiian tropa f does too. Also, since I have you here, we can cover some other natural alternatives. Yes, I have heard that raspberry seed oil, which provides a natural SPF of 28, I believe, though I am not sure if a UVA protective rating has been established, 
And to be perfectly honest, I do not trust the blogosphere to accurately educate me on that figure. I have personally never used raspberry seed oil, so I cannot give you first-hand advice. But if anyone has who's watching this video, please comment down below and let us know whether or not it's effective for beaching, hiking, swimming, or preventing what I can only refer to as Robert Redford face. I don't want to look like this. And I will address this in one sentence. Coconut oil is not sun protective semicolon at all, comma, never has been, period. I've also seen some recipes for your own sunscreen whereby you purchase zinc oxide or titanium dioxide from the interwebs and you mix it with whatever carrier you please. In the recipe that I saw, it called for coconut oil. And then you use that mixture as sunscreen. I have never used this method, and to be perfectly honest, I'm definitely not going to. Since the information that I saw indicates that mineral sunscreens that don't coat those minerals with inert chemicals to reduce photoactivity means that those minerals could turn into free radicals when they're exposed to the sun and cause skin damage. So as a girl who is definitely a member of the Better Safe Than Sorry tribe, I'm just going to stick with the products that I know have been specifically formulated and tested and are known to be effective and safe. Those are the non-nanoized, mineral-based, chemical-free to the largest extent possible sunscreens that I just told you about and are linked down below. All right, guys, so that is it for today. Questions and comments go down below. Make sure you check out my other awesome sun care video for information on how you can prevent skin damage and aging through diet and lifestyle, as well as the short film Reefs at Risk for more information. Until next time, make better choices for yourself and for our magnificent oceans and take really, really good care. I will see you all very soon. Bye.